Hey everyone, uh, so today I actually went to the new Hybe Insight exhibition. Um, it's called The Daydream Believers, and I believe it opened like two days ago, so I went on the opening weekend and um, I got some merch and I thought I would maybe talk about my experience there and then show you the 17 merch I got there. So. Let me go ahead and take the merch I got out of my shopping bag and we can get going. Okay, so this was everything that I had picked up from the merch shop. Um, before I kind of dig into it, I just kind of want to give an overview of it. Um, there is like the original Hype Insight that is at like the Hype office. I honestly, I don't know if it's closed or not. I think it might be. I don't know if they're like overhauling it. Um, but I had been to that one twice years ago. Or I don't, was it like two... A year and a half ago I don't know how long it was but um I went like relatively early when it first opened up and as a 17 fan I was pretty let down by it there wasn't like a whole lot to see and I thought it was kind of like overpriced for what you could do there um especially because it's like an official exhibit you know like I was comparing it to the old SM museum if anyone had been there that was in Korea um it's closed now but they had like the SM museum in the cafe so I was kind of comparing it to that and like the SM one was like so much better than <laughs> I'm in sight um but anyway yeah so I went to that twice uh whenever it opened and back then I don't remember the price if I can look it up I'll put it like in the text or in the picture here um but I do know like you got to pick what member photo ticket you wanted um and so for this new exhibit the daydream believers you just got a random member which okay fine whatever um I get that it's like a marketing ploy to like get people to come in more and all that kind of thing so I'll let that slide but it was really expensive um it was 35,000 per ticket if you got the pre-order one I think it was 33 they gave you like 2,000 off like woohoo whatever it's like a dollar off USD <laughs> yeah so anyway it was 35,000 and for what you had to pay to get in it was so not worth it like I can't even begin to tell you like how not worth it it was I had low expectations going in because like I said I was like disappointed a bit with the previous hype insight but this one was so much worse like I would happily take the old hype <laughs> insight uh back but um yeah there pretty much all you could see was they had like one part that had like two photos of every member from the different groups that were featured there they had some like digital photos that had like this like water effect on them that like anyone with basic computer and editing skills could make um and then yeah they had a part where they had like the sets from the photo shoot set up and it's like look at the set where your favorite idol took the photos or whatever but like 17's set was a plastic tarp some like gym mats and then a couple chairs and that was it so it was just like a plastic tarp like hung on the wall and then like some rolled up gym mats and it was just it was just so stupid like they had a couple pieces of clothing that they had like worn in the shoot but they didn't have all the members I think they maybe had like four jackets or shirts and like a couple pairs of pants and they weren't labeled or like properly displayed like at least in the old hype inside one they had like a case with like the full outfit and it was like labeled like with what member it was and I remember when I went to the 17 museum in Japan they had similar thing like they had like a mannequin or whatever like with all of the clothes for each member I don't know like <laughs> for it being the company it shouldn't have been this lackluster and like I said it was 35,000 to go through I think I walked through the entire thing within like 15 minutes so like not even a thousand won a minute <laughs> um yeah and so then after that I'm trying to think if there was like anything else there was honestly like nothing and then like you couldn't even take photos in like the main areas that people would want to take photos and I mean obviously the theory behind that is if if they let people take photos then they would show it on social media and stuff and then no one would buy tickets and come because they would see everything there is to see there <laughs> um but anyway after you go through that then there's the merch shop the merch shop is like 
they really like laid down the law with it. I don't remember the <laughs> other hype one being this strict, but you could only get one per each item, um, which I think is pretty good. That means like people can't come in and buy out everything and then resell it. So I'm glad they did that. Um, but yeah, the prices of the merch too was astronomical. Like <laughs> I did not get a lot. I didn't even get all the 17 stuff. They had like stickers, posters, and then they had some of the old hype insight stuff. Um, which some of it I already have, but yeah, this, okay, this is not part of it. This is all I bought and it was over a hundred thousand Korean won just for this. Can you believe that? That's insane. Um, and then as you are leaving the gift shop, um, they also tell you like, once you step foot out of the building, you can't exchange, you can't return. Like they're really laying down the law. Like, let me tell you. But um, once you're heading out, they have like a photo booth area and you can take one photo and like it prints you on like a sticker thing. I'm not going to show that, but um, yeah. And like it was a really low quality sticker. I've seen the same thing at like cafes for free and like birthday member birthday events that like fan sites and stuff set up. So like that was nothing proprietary or like super special to me like you get like a low quality printed out sticker that I've seen like so many times so yeah anyway um <laughs> I'm trying to finish my rant I'm sorry my advice is if you are visiting Korea or if you do live in Korea and you're debating going to it I say no don't go save your money not worth it um the only thing that made it worth it was I got some merch that I wanted because like the photos are pretty um I will give them that <laughs> but um yeah, I don't think it's worth paying 35,000 Korean won just to get into a merch shop where you have to pay more money, you know? Um, but anyway, you do get a photo ticket. Um, it's just like a hard plastic card. And yeah, I when I got mine, I'll put the video here. I filmed myself looking at it for the first time in the exhibit because I was in a place where they hadn't restricted cameras yet. Um, but I got June. Um, and then when you leave the gift shop and you walk out of the building, there's a whole bunch of people standing there. I went on the weekend, so it probably won't be the same during the weekday. I don't know. But there was a whole bunch of people like holding up their cards and wanting to trade. And I was able to trade June and get Mihao! Yay! So like I said, this is like a plasticky type card. Um, I will read this card. Um, it does have some English in it, so I'll read the English part. What do you daydream about? What are you doing to make those daydreams come true? The artists of Hive Labels are daydream believers who dare to dream and made them come true with unwavering commitment and sacrifice. They are living proof that with perseverance and resilience, dreams do, in fact, come true. Here we celebrate the beautiful portraits of our daydream believers to inspire and cheer on all those who believe in their dreams. May the star studded eyes of BTS 17, Tomorrow by Together, and Hyphen and Les Seraphim inspire you to continue pursuing your own daydream. So yeah, I mean, that's nice and all, but like, let's be real, this is a money grab by <laughs> the company. I'm assuming like, I mean, look at the photo, like this is not a recent photo, this was taken like a year ago. Um, so this has been in the works for a while. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just am very disappointed for what I paid. Oh, I forgot one thing in the exhibit. So they had another thing. This is like the only interactive part of the exhibit. They had like, um, like film negatives, um, film strips. I don't know exactly what you would call them of all of the artists and they were in these little clips and you could move them over to a projector and it would just like project the photo um and it was kind of cool so this was like the best part of the exhibit in my opinion but so i went over and i found 17s and i grabbed i think ming hao's first and then i put it on the projector and it projected it and i was like oh cool and you know i just looked at it i didn't even get to take a picture and i do think you could take pictures in this area like i thought this was just like an open area. So, and there weren't a lot of people there. Like I wasn't, there wasn't a line. No one was waiting for me to finish. They had multiple stations set up. But anyway, I took Ming Hao's photo off and I put it away and I went to grab Ming Yu's. And then a worker came over and she's like, only one per person. And I was like, what? And she's like, you can only do or show one photo per person. And I was like, you're telling me I paid 35,000 
Korean wand. And in this room where there's no signage posted about how you can only use it one time, and there's only like three or four other people in the room with me, that I can't look at another photo on the projector. <laughs> like, I was pretty annoyed by that. Like, I just don't get why there was... Like, I get if someone's like going through and taking like all of the photos, but like I literally had only done one. And like I said, there was like no one in the room. No one was waiting. They had a bunch of machines. They had like four different machines and everyone else was just like doing their own thing. But yeah, that bugged me. Anyway, that was like the only semi-decent or like unique thing in the exhibit. But like I said, I was kicked out of there after like one minute. So um, anyway, <laughs> So here is a close-up of Ming Hao. I do really love this photo of him. He looks very daydreamy, how fitting. And then here's the back. Just as 17, hide in sight, the daydream believers. Um, I do want Mingyus, but honestly, I am pretty certain I'm never gonna go back <laughs> for the cost and everything. Um, unless I'm somehow able to get like a discount coupon or something, but. Okay, so here's all the merch. Um, this is, I believe they call it like a postcard book. These are really big postcards. They're bigger than normal postcards. Um, these are photo sets. I got each unit and then we have photo cards. And then this was a disposable camera that comes also with photo cards. So let's start with the postcard book. Okay, so it's like a hard cover. I will say the colors and everything are really pretty. And each group had like a different color motif. Like um, 17's is kind of like a lavender and a mint seafoam green. And then some of the other groups had like pink and red and I don't remember what else, but you could see like who was there for the different groups based on their uh, booklet that had the card in it. But let's go ahead and look at these. Ooh, these are like shiny. Um, yeah, I would not call these postcards. I would definitely call these photos, but they're labeled as postcards. Um, but yeah, you can see in the camera, it's like a glossy photo finish. And these are really large. Um, so they're like 21 centimeters by 14 and a half centimeters. So they are much larger than regular postcards. I don't know why they call them that. I guess they couldn't call them photos since they called the other ones photos. But anyway, here's Coops. It says their name at the bottom as well. And then here's Jungham. Like I said, these photos are really pretty. And considering they just did it with a uh, plastic tarp, some gym mats, oh, there was like a giant inflatable ball, which is what he's leaning on, but it was like a bare bones photo shoot. So props to the photographer and production team because these photos are gorgeous and I would have never known they were just made with stuff you can find at a elementary school gym. <laughs> Shua looks really good too. Ooh, Juni. Sadly, I don't have any pictures of this set or um, the outfits that they did have or the pieces of clothing. They weren't complete outfits. Um, they also had a part in the set area where you could like write a note to 17. They had the same thing at, at 17th Street. Like it's just like a little post-it and you can write a note and hang it up. And they had a section for each group. So I did write a note. Um, I didn't get to take a picture of that either. I was kind of worried about taking my camera out because they were patrolling like really hard looking for people taking photos. But anyway, here's Wanu. I really like Wanu. So he's very pretty. G. Ooh, Ming Hao. Oh, you know what? I think they had his jacket. I'm remembering seeing like a fuzzy jacket. So I think his jacket was there. And I know Coops' jacket was there. Vernon's shirt. Um, and then they had like two or three pairs of pants. And I was like, I don't know whose pants those are. <laughs> Based, like, look at this photo. Like, I don't know whose pants it is. And they were labeled. And they just had them all like, there was two items, I think, like separately hung. But the majority were just like on a random clothing rack. It was really bizarre. <laughs> Well, you can see his nose freckle. That's a good thing. DK. Playing with the plastic tarp that I saw. Wow, I saw the same plastic tarp that DK was playing with in his photo shoot. <laughs> Singlan. Ooh, his is pretty, like, the pale baby blues everywhere. Really pretty. Vernon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure his shirt was there. And you know, you know, everything white. And yeah, it looks like these can be like very carefully ripped out. Oh, 
I might have already started ripping mine on accident. But yeah, I believe you can like very carefully peel these out so you have them separate. Okay, so here we have like the photo packs. Um, they are by unit. Um, yeah, so I don't know, like, I get that it's a lot to buy and like maybe people don't want to buy all of the, the units or like all of the members because it would be more because there's 13 of them, but I'm pretty sure all the previous Merchant Hype Insight for 17 was like collective as a group. So I do wish that this was collective because I had to pay three times for this, you know, as opposed to just one price, but whatever. Um, let's go ahead and start with, uh, uh, also I do want to point out that these are printed on Fujifilm, so like if you buy them from someone, be sure that they are authentic and not just someone who has a scan and is reprinting it. <laughs> um, but anyway, here is Coops, looking good. These are different pictures than the uh, postcard book, which is appreciated. Um, I, When I was picking them out, I was like trying to carefully look at them through the cellophane and the cellophane was kind of scratched, but I was like moving it, trying to look if the photo was damaged because they were really like, you can't return or exchange after you step foot out of here. So I was like, ah, make sure everything's okay. So Cho looks good. <laughs> Yeah, Wanu. Wanu's colors and like the soft filter. He looks so dreamy. I really like Wanu. Ooh, we got Golden Mingyu. Adonis himself. With the prominent nose freckle. Ah. And Vernon. Fiery Vernon. Like mustard and red. I really love the colors. Like, I, I, that's why I bought this stuff is because like I really genuinely do like these photos a lot. Okay, let's do vocal. Okay, so Jung Hans does have a couple dings on it, but that's okay. I tried my best to look, it was really difficult. We got Shua. Shua has a ding too. Uji. Man, all of vocal has dings. What the heck? Hip hop didn't have any. DK. Yeah, it must be like, are there holes? It's like they're all in the same spot, so it must have been the machine or something. Oh, Sing Ones doesn't have it, but all the members through DK have like two marks at the top. Oh well, this is really pretty too. But again, that plastic tarp, oh my God. Literally, like when I saw it, I was like, you made a whole giant exhibit room? Like it cost them nothing. Like they invested, some of the other groups like Les Seraphim, and stuff had like a couch and like a TV and like it looked more like a proper set. 17's was literally a plastic tarp and some like gym mats and a giant ball and like a chair or two. Like, I just can't believe they had a whole exhibit section to show that. Ah, I can't believe it. Okay, here is performance. June's looks all right. So I guess it was just that vocal one. Um that had dings because so far these two look okay. Ooh, Ming Hao. He says the prettiest hands. And Dino. Dino looks really good too. Dino's is giving me a Taka Opus 1. That was a blue one, right? Like that's what it's reminding me of. The colors and everything. All right, now we have the photo card set. Um, it always comes in like a cassette case. The old ones did too. So let me go ahead and take this out. Okay, so the case is scratched a bit. That's okay though. Um, I don't think I really closely looked at this one. I was really worried about the photos because those were like flimsy. Um, but yeah, it should open like this. Okay, this, I am so dumb. This took me forever to figure out. I thought like this part opened but it opens like this. <laughs> um, yeah, that took me a hot minute to figure out. Okay, so these are kind of cardboardy. They're a little bit thin. They're pretty thin, actually. Um, they're definitely not as thick as like the Kino cards. Um, and then size-wise, they're about 10 by 7 centimeters. Um, and yeah, here is... Chols. And these are different photos again. It just says the name on the back. 
There's Junkon. Ooh, his is really nice. I like his Shua. June. Purple June. Oshi. Um, these do have like faint lines on them. All of them have it. They're not scratches and they're not really printing streaks. I don't know exactly what they are. Wanu. G. How this looks really good. You DK Singlum. Vernon. I really like this Vernon one. And Dino. Yeah, so all of these have like little scuffs and stuff on them. Um, as it, to be expected, I guess, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I still really love the photos and everything. So pretty happy. All right, last but certainly not least, because it was very expensive, um, is the film camera. I was on the fence about this, but I thought it was kind of a unique thing. And yeah, I like the photo cards that came with it. So let's check it out. Okay, so this is just your standard disposable camera. Um, and it just has like the cardboard um, 17 thing. It's like not worth anything. Like they literally just put it around a Fuji film camera, you know? Um, but yeah, it looks like I get 17 photos, which is funny. I wonder if that was intentional or not. Um, and it just says DJ and Believers and all that stuff of it. it has in, uh, instructions in English, which is interesting. I would figure they would be in Korean. But yeah, that's the camera. I haven't decided like where I'm going to use this. I was thinking maybe the concert or something like beforehand, but then I was like, I have to carry around a camera and they might not let me take the camera in and you know, all that stuff. So I don't know, I'll have to decide when and where to use this. <laughs> okay, and here are the photo cards. I think yeah, these seem to be the same size as like the photo card set. So here's Chul. These don't have names on the back. Jung Han. Ooh, she was his yellow. His were like purpley and pink, weren't they? Juni. These look to be in good condition. Hoshi. Wanu. His hands are kind of awkward, but I really love the colors and his face. But his face is always good. <laughs> Uji, again, kind of interesting arm placement. I wonder why they chose this one. <laughs> Ming Hao. Sitting on the tarp with the gym mats. I, God. <laughs> Mingyu. Mingyu's is giving me. Oh gosh, what album was it? Was it, it wasn't You Make Me My Dawn. I don't know, it's reminding me of some album photos or photo card or something. DK. Denim on denim look. Singwan. <laughs> His face, but the colors are really pretty. Vernon. And Dino. Again with the Ataka Opus 1 vibes. Okay, so that does it for my Hype Insight Daydream Believers exhibit. Um, I don't know. It's not a vlog. A recount. A rant. <laughs> and um, merch haul. Uh, yeah, let me just reiterate. If you are visiting Korea or in Korea, I don't think it's worth the money. <laughs> um... 
there's a much cooler like k-pop things you could do but i also get it like if you're visiting and you want to do something to like see 17 stuff like i get it um i just don't think i'll be going back um but yeah let me know what do you think would you want to visit this exhibit if you were in korea or if you are in korea very curious about what other people think of it because i haven't seen too many comments about it i saw some k carrots korean carrots saying like there's nothing to look at and i was like you're absolutely right there is nothing to look at but besides that i didn't really see a whole lot of feedback and that kind of thing but yeah um until next time i will see you guys later bye bye